Have you ever thought of becoming a shark after watching Shark Tank episodes on Loop? Well, now might be the right time to be a shark and invest in Indian startups. To put things into perspective, India has the third largest tech startup ecosystem in the world after the US and China. In 2022, India added the second highest number of unicorns in the world. If you're excited about being a part of India's growth story and want to know the A to Z of startup investing, this video is just for you. In this video, I'll discuss the pros and cons of investing investing in startups as an NRI. How can NRIs invest in Indian startups? Factors to consider while investing and steps to start investing in startups. If you find this lineup exciting, hit that like button and keep watching till the end. Let's start with the benefits of investing in startups. Have you wondered why angel investors go gaga over investing in startups? Well, there are three major reasons behind the startup investment craze. First up, investing in startups can give you anywhere between 10x to 100x returns. Google, which is the $1.8 trillion search engine giant, it started with a $1 million in seed funding in 97 when it was just a startup. In 1992, VC firms acquired 10% each of the company for a total of $25 million. Can you guess how much returns the early investors made? They made nearly 1700% returns on their investment. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you need to find the next Google to be successful in startup investing. I'm just saying that startup investments might give you 10x, 100x and even 1000x returns. All you need is an eye to spot early innovators, high risk tolerance and the ability to do in-depth research. The second benefit and probably the most significant one is the opportunity to build the future. Who could have imagined a few decades ago that space could be a tourist destination? Who could have imagined artificial intelligence could be your personal assistant? The early investors believed in the impossible and are reshaping the future. As a startup investor, you get the same opportunity. The next benefit on our list is diversification and networking opportunities. Investing in startups help you diversify the high-risk allocation of your portfolio. You also get to network with investors, entrepreneurs and industry experts. Investing in startups indeed has some major benefits, but everything about startup investments is not rosy. It comes with some risks. The first major risk is the massive failure rate. 9 out of 10 startups fail. This means most startup investments might never generate returns. The key takeaway here is to invest only what you can lose. The kind of money loss that won't affect your day-to-day -day finances. The second risk of startup investments is inflated valuations. Calculating the valuation of a startup is challenging due to limited financial history and uncertain future cash flows. Startups have the habit of presenting optimistic and inflated valuations to attract better investments. And as an investor, it's on you to provide funding at a fair valuation. I trust you on this as negotiating a fair price is in our Indian DNA. The last startup investment risk on our list is the not so liquid nature of these investments. You cannot trade startup investments like you trade stocks on a trading exchange. To cash your returns, you will have to wait until the companies go public or perhaps are acquired. You can even sell your stake to other investors, but it is difficult to do so when the company is in its early stages. So when you invest in a startup, think of it as locking your funds for over five years. Now that you know both the pros and cons of investing in startups, let me tell you all the ways NRIs can invest in Indian startups. When it comes to investing in startups, you can go solo or become a part of an investing group. Angel investing is for individual investors, while alternative investment funds or AIFs are pooled investments. Let's discuss these in detail. As I said, the first category is angel investing investing for individual investors. Angel investors invest in small, early-stage companies. Those companies who have only tested or just planned their products and require funds to expand. Finding such companies early and writing angel checks requires both connections and luck. If you're a part of an investor network, this will be a cakewalk for you. If not, you'll have to get help from professional investor networks. Here's a fun fact. The term angel investor came from the Broadway theatrical world. Here, plays were very often funded by wealthy individuals aka angel investors rather than formal lenders. And guess what? Payments were due only if the play was a success. Nothing has changed. Be it funding plays or startups, you get returns only when the project becomes successful. Since the risk of such investments is high, it is better to diversify your angel investment portfolio across multiple such companies. The second startup investment category is the alternate investment funds or AIFs. Don't get overwhelmed by the complex name. 
think of AIFs as mutual funds for startup investing. Alternate investment funds are pooled investments by hundreds of investors. The minimum ticket size of these funds is about 1 crore rupees. SEBI has divided AIFs into three categories. The first category includes funds that invest in registered startups. These are further classified into four types based on the companies they invest in. Venture capital funds invest in new age businesses that require funding in their early days. Angel funds invest in companies that need capital and investors' expertise and connections. Infrastructure funds invest in railways, construction, airports, ports, etc. And lastly, we have social venture funds, which invest in companies that bring about a social change. The second AIF category includes private equity funds, debt funds, and fund of funds. Private equity funds invest directly in private companies. Debt funds provide loans to startups. And fund of funds invest in multiple funds rather than directly investing in startups. Moving on to the last category of AIFs, we have private investment in public equity funds and hedge funds. Private investment in public equity funds or PIPE purchases shares directly from a public company below market rates. You can think of PIPE as customers who get exclusive discounts on a product. Talking about hedge funds, these funds invest in both domestic and international debt as well as equity markets. But before I jump on to the next section, let me ask you something. If you were to buy a new smartphone, what would you do? You'll not just go into a mobile shop one fine day and buy the first smartphone you see, right? You'll first research and find a smartphone based on factors like price, brand, pros and cons, etc. Similarly, there are certain factors you must weigh before you dive into the world of startup investing. For your convenience, I have prepared a list of five major factors. Let's go through them one by one. Firstly, you must know that there's a maximum investment ceiling for startups made by NRIs. Based on which sector you're investing in, you can invest only 10% to 24% of the company's total paid up capital as per the RBI's norms. If you're investing individually, you cannot invest more than 5% of the total paid up capital of the company. Now that you know how much you can invest, select the bank account to start investing in the second step. As an NRI, you can invest using NRO, NRE or FCNR accounts. If you know the features of these accounts, you would know that the funds in your NRO account cannot be repatriated to your foreign residence country. On the other hand, funds in your NRE and FCNR accounts are repatriable. While selecting a bank account for investments, ask yourself a simple question. Will I use the returns overseas or in India? Based on your answer, take a call. The third and probably the most important factor is regulatory compliance. While investing in India, you must comply with all the regulations set by the RBI, Foreign Exchange Management Act or FEMA and SEBI. Check the investment limits, repatriation guidelines and tax rules before you sign your angel check. For example, your investment will be considered foreign direct investment or FDI only if you invest in equity shares, fully and mandatorily convertible preference shares and fully and mandatorily convertible debentures. If you're investing in sectors that require government approval, you'll need an approval from the Foreign Investment Promotion Board and other authorities. Now, the fourth important factor that you must consider while investing is the price at which you acquire the stake. According to the RBI, the price at which you acquire shares should not be less than the fair value of shares determined by a SEBI registered merchant banker or a CA. Lastly, we have everyone's not so favorite topic, taxes. The tax implications on your investment depend on the type of asset you invest in and the duration of your investment. For example, if you held an investment for less than 24 months and you have a valid PAN card, you will pay a short term capital gains tax of 15% on your gains. Here's the bad news. If you do not have a PAN card, your short term capital gains double up and shoot to 30%. If you decide to hold your investments for over 24 months, you will pay a long-term capital gains tax of 10% on your gains given you have a valid PAN card. For NRIs who don't have a PAN card, the long-term capital gains tax is 20% of gains. If you don't have a PAN card yet, please apply for one as soon as you complete watching this video. I know you're getting restless to know about the steps to invest in startups, so let's get straight into it without wasting any more time. Step 1 is to find a startup you want to invest in. I hate to break it to you, but finding the next 10x or 100x is like finding a needle in the haystack. But if you scan the startup databases, read media articles and keep an eye on startup accelerator and incubator programs, you might find the next big company. A little birdie told me that being a part of an investor circle will increase your chances of finding the best startups. Once you find a promising startup, step 2 is to evaluate it and determine if it's worth investing in. When evaluating 
evaluating a startup, imagine you're a shark in the Indian Shark Tank show and start evaluating the company. Read its financial statements, review the pitch deck and scan its due diligence reports. Match all this with industry trends and you will have your answer. The next step is to talk money. Your investment amount will depend on factors like your risk appetite, your investment goals and whether or not you're fine with the company's ask and valuation. If all these are aligned, it's time to sign that investor check. Step four is to invest. After you've decided to invest in a startup, complete all the legal formalities and provide the funding amount. The last but the most important step is to monitor your investment. Funding startups is not an invest and forget style of investment. You must attend shareholder meetings to stay updated about the company's progress and also keep a track of its performance. That's it for the video guys. Let's do a quick recap before signing off. First things first, startup investments are not all gold. If there are benefits like unrestricted growth, there are risks of failure too. So weigh all the consequences and invest based on your risk tolerance. Investing in startups gives you the flexibility to invest individually or via investment funds, whatever channel you choose. Consider all factors like regulations, investment limits, and tax implications before you jump into the world of startups. On a side note, nine out of 10 startups Fail. So do thorough research before investing in one. I think you're now a step closer to becoming an informed startup investor. And before you go, here's an important reminder. This video is only meant for educational purposes. Any information mentioned in this video is not an endorsement or an investment advice. So if you found this video helpful, do not forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Grow NRI for more such detailed finance videos. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, happy investing.